Good morning. My name is Jack Brockway. I'll be the officiant today on the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining us with morning, for morning prayer. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, there will be a fall work day on November 7th at 9.30 a.m. for everyone that can make it. We're also raising money for Christmas this year to sponsor somebody for Boys Home. The cost per student is $100, so if we raise more than $100, what we'll do is divide the rest between other people.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from, Lord, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God our Heavenly Father to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the beauty and holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 90, full verse. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dusk and say, Go back, O child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. 
Set us out by us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us prosper the work of our hands, and prosper our handiwork. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land. Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Massas, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negeb, the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Por. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plain of Moab thirty days. Then the period of mourning of Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom before Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since had there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses. When the Lord knew face to face, he was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and for all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all of Israel. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first chapter of Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but th though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated in, at Philippi. As you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you and from others though we may have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also ourselves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a question of descendants. What are we leaving for them? Whether or not they're biologically related to us, there's no doubt that the decisions we make in our lifetimes impact not only the humans and non-human creation around us now, but all those who might come after us. Sometimes they're good things. Being able to leave your children and grandchildren earthly wealth, providing young people education and opportunities you never had, passing on wisdom and experience and lessons hard learned, knowing that the next generation of our family and our leadership will benefit from your life and work. Other times, imagining the world our descendants will inherit is less hopeful. An earth ravaged by our toxic consumption, waste, and policies. Institutions marred by racism and classism. In America, dwindling social security funds, health care systems that are crumbling or crashing. A massive national debt added to massive, na massive student loans, and the list goes on. We might not climb our metaphorical Mount Nesbo or Pisgah today and be satisfied with a version of what the next generations might inherit when we're gone. Perhaps Moses also had some mixed emotions as he, served the land, as he surveyed the land his descendants would inherit. He had seen his nation, his family, through so much. Liberated from enslavement, wandering through the desert, trying and failing and trying harder to be faithful to the great I Am. Like any community's leader, Moses has taken the heat, has stumbled and fallen, has made poor decisions, and has tried his very best to discern God's mission for the people of Israel. God is well pleased with Moses in the end. Moses dies not from old age, not from sickness. He's not blind or deaf or broken in the way human bodies grow weary when they've survived so much. No, Moses dies by the command of God, a gift from God to the obedient servant. And, our story of origin specifies, Moses is even buried by God. The prodigy of Moses does not carry out the final task as Moses' soul departs the earth, but the creator of the universe provides this intimate and loving act to the servant leader. And thus, the mantle of authority is passed on to Joshua. God blesses Joshua in his new responsibility and is involved in every step of the transition. And that's key. God has been involved in liberating the nation, in leading him home, in disciplining them, and now is intimately involved in the leadership. Before, during, and after the death of Moses, God is with the nation of Israel and will not abandon them. Our song for today, the only one associated with Moses, reminds us that God is present from one generation to the next, and well beyond, and well before. God has given birth to the world, and God's time is not restricted to a lifespan, only remembered by artifacts, memories, and descendants. The psalmist uses words and phrases to remind all of us that God's eternity contrasts with human transience. It's a helpful practice to remember this, the ever-living presence of God, especially when lifespans in our current moment are shortened by illness and violence, and the world seems to crash down in its own fragility. God is beyond the scope, the human scope, of time, 
bigger than anything we could ever imagine. And God cares so much about each of us that God will bless, bury, anoint, and love us. Would that all our nations were governed by someone who strives as hard as Moses to follow God's will. But that's exactly our Christian obligation to ourselves and to our descendants to remember that we are someone's ancestors, biologically, spiritually, communally, and to base our decisions with that knowledge in mind. In his letter to the Thessalonians, Paul is trying his hardest to be a good leader, following the footsteps of his ancestors. A spiritual descendant of Moses and a young Jew, Paul's main aim as founding father of the community is to enable the Thessalonians to lead a life worthy of God. The passage just after today's lectionary excerpt, excerpt states this explicitly. We dealt with, one, with each other, one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you, and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Paul outlines a form of parenting, of Christ-like leadership, that seems impossible in every moment of real life. Reading his missives to the Thessalonians, we can only hope to live with the type of character that Paul claims to be living along with his disciples. According to his letter, Paul's leadership is pure of trickery and deceit, selfishness or greed, and full instead of honorable suffering, faith in God, gentleness, and care. Don't you wish you and every Christian you know was able to live and lead like this? Paul's expectations may be a little high, but what is worth his words is the way he strives to teach and nurture the young followers of Christ in Thessalonica. He's raising a new generation, building his descendants, and therefore the descendants of Christ and of Moses. The way we treat those who are around us and come after us must be the way of God. Perhaps if we can proclaim the gospel in our words and our deeds in our lifetime, we might leave our descendants with something better than we found it. This one could say is exactly what Jesus did in a big way. Jesus was able to raise up new generations, a new spiritual community, a new way of living that both learned from his ancestors like Moses and left a transforming power and relationship with God to those who picked up this man, like Paul did. Jesus' way of living and teaching and proclaiming the good news was nothing like anyone had ever seen before. It was confusing. He didn't follow the same line as the ancestors before him had. And, perhaps, not living in the way Paul would have come to write about, some of the religious leaders were just fed up. Our Gospel passage, according to Matthew, comes on the Tuesday before Christ's execution. Matthew first records three of Jesus' parables, and then three of the religious leaders' riddles or tricks of Jesus. The reading today comes during their last attempt to entrap Jesus in his own words. This is not the type of descendant they had wished for themselves. According to rabbinic script a tradition, the accepted number of commandments is 613. 613. These are laws that the religious leaders are called to follow and enforce. And yet, they ask Jesus which is greatest, and he tells them simply, love God, love your neighbor. These two commandments will change the world. In his answer, Jesus follows the rabbinic law, the law of his ancestors. You shall love the Lord as a part of the Shema, the basic affirmation of Jewish faith. Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the Jewish fathers, 
contains a similar axiom. The world stands on three things, on the Torah, on the service of God, and upon acts of loving kindness. The commandments are familiar pieces of Jewish culture, teaching, and religion. But the way Jesus embodies them upends familiar expectations. Whose son is he, the religious leaders ask. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The religious leaders are stumped. And this is the part of the story where they begin to plot ways to remove the threat. Despite their best attempts, those who feared Jesus' power were not able to suppress him. Being executed as a political martyr, Jesus demonstrated God's love in a way that would change his descendants forever. Today, we're still calling, we're still calling ourselves followers of Christ. The mantle of Christ's teaching, life, responsibility, and authority have been passed from one generation to the next over thousands of years. And in each of these lives, in yours and in mine, as it was for Moses and Joshua, God is present, and God will remain so throughout all times. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We also pray for Ashley, Sue, George, Virginia, Jack, Michael, Dottie, Kylie, Helen, Nancy, Beth, Gary, Johnny, Connell, Elizabeth, Melissa, Caroline, John, Jim, Nolan, Shirley, Barbara, Forrest, Noel, Joanne, Jim, Robert, Joe, Brianna, Anthea, Jim, Bob, Connie, Noah, Bill, Mike, Thelma, Wilma, Jean, Sharon, Jim, Carla, Greg, and for the residents and staff of Warm Hearth Village. 
We pray for all who are suffering from this pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May, may we who are okay financially remember those who have lost their jobs. May we who can stay safe at home remember those who have no home. We pray for those who have died, especially those who have died from coronavirus. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may attain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all else, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.